we find that Jesus Christ is the head of this church. Right. Ephesians 5 and verse 23, the Bible says, For as the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. I believe that that church uh, was purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, Acts 20 and verse 28, the Bible says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, over which the Holy Ghost has made your overseers to feed the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. I hear some people running around bragging about how much their church is cost. My church costs a million dollars, a two million, a 2.5 million. The church that I'm a member of tonight costs more than that. It costs the blood of Jesus. Out there on Calvary, he shed his blood for on Calvary's cross that we might have a right to the tree of life. Is that all right? And so I'm glad to be a member of the church of Christ. And I trust that we will all leave here tonight Members of the church we can read about in the Bible. Yes. Romans the 16th chapter and verse number 16. Right. The Bible says, salute one another with a holy kiss. Yes. The churches of Christ yes. salute you. Yes. Well, now don't go run ahead of the scripture now. The Bible of the church is spoken of in at least two senses. Right. In the universal sense and in the local congregational yes. sense. Yes. When the Bible says, Jesus said, Upon this rock I will build my church. That was a church in its universal sense. Right. But when you pick up your Bible, before we go to our text tonight, I want you to go back to the book of Acts. Get your Bibles and turn to the book of Acts. Yes. And you will find, as you read the book of Acts, uh -huh. that this book tells how men, women, boys, and girls yes. uh, became members of the church of Christ. Right. Beginning in Acts 2 and verse 47. The Bible says, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added unto the church daily, such as should be saved. Well, when you turn on over, you find the book of Romans. That's a church of Christ. When you turn on over to the uh, Corinthian letters, that was written to a church of Christ. Somebody might say, Gibbs, how do you know it's written uh, to the church of Christ? Well, the Bible says uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 yeah. and verse number 2, right. unto the church of God, right. which is at Corinth, yeah. to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Well, now, if they were in Christ Jesus, they were in the church because the same act that puts one into Christ Jesus yes. puts one into the body of Christ yes. because being in Christ is tantamount to being in the church. Yes. In other words, if you're in the church, you are in Christ. Yes. So Paul identified them as being in Christ. Yes. Is that all right? Yes. Well, now, the church at Corinth, church of Christ, you turn on over, turn on over to your left, and uh, you find another church there. Uh, the book of Galatia. You had churches scattered out throughout the region of Galatia. But they were all churches of Christ. You didn't have one that was a Baptist, another that was a Presbyterian, and another that was something else. They were all churches of Christ. Why? Because they all heard the same thing. They all believed the same thing. They all obeyed the same thing. And they all became the same thing. Is that all right? If we would cast away man-made doctrines, creeds, and prayer books, we would all be the same thing. Is that all right? Yes, when you look on over to the book of Ephesians, another church of Christ, the Bible says in Ephesians 1 and verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. How do I know that this book was written to people who were members of the church of Christ? I know because they were in Christ Jesus. Well, how did they get into Christ Jesus? They were baptized. You can see that over in the Galatian letter. Galatians chapter 3 and verse number 26. The Bible says, for ye all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. 
for as many of you as have been what? Baptized into Jesus Christ, have put on Christ. All right, so we find that we are baptized into Christ. You can't pay your way in, and you can't pray your way in. You have to obey your way in. When we turn to the book of Philippians, we find another church of Christ. Because the Bible says in Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 1, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints, let's say it together, church, in Christ Jesus. They were not around Christ Jesus. They were not merely associated with Christ Jesus. They were in Christ Jesus. How did they get into Christ Jesus? They were baptized into Christ Jesus. Am I right about it? All right, so I just wanted to know, wanted you to know tonight uh, that all of these churches that we have out here don't belong to Christ. The church of Christ and only the church of Christ belongs to him. And uh, we must be a member of that church if we want to be saved. And, uh, and you can go on over uh, to the book of Colossians and you'll find the same thing. Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 2. To the saints and faithful brethren where? In Christ. Now I don't see how you can be out there tonight a member of a denomination and fail to see this. These men, women, boys, and girls were in Christ Jesus. All right, now, since we understand that there is but one church, and since we know how to get in to that one church, then uh, the lesson we have tonight is designed to further encourage you to make up your mind that you're going to walk out on denominationalism, give your hand to the preacher, guard your heart, and obey Christ and become a member of New Testament Christianity. Right. Romans 7 verse 4. Good to see all of these preachers here tonight. All of our sister congregations. Now if I seem a little bit heavy and windy tonight, it's because I had a very good dinner over to the bookers today. And I want to thank those of you who have made it possible for me to have dinner and lunch at various places. Thank you so much, and I appreciate you so much for being here tonight. Amen. Romans 7 verse 4 will serve as our textual catalyst for tonight. Paul said, Wherefore, my brethren, ye are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Wherefore, my brethren, he said again, ye have become what? Dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, the one that was raised from the dead. Uh, a few months ago, I had conducted a meeting uh, in Tampa, Florida, not far from here, as you know. And uh, I got on that plane that morning after I had conducted the meeting there with Brother Beasley. And uh, they showed a movie uh, that was popular at that time entitled The Preacher's Wife. Well, I was tired like I'm going to be Saturday morning and like we are when we preach, you know. Uh, but uh, I was able to stay awake long enough uh, to watch a little of the movie. Uh, I think to see the title and, and see my boy Denzel Washington uh, and my girl Whitney Houston, uh, two of my favorite entertainers. Well, I, I thought about that while I was on the plane. I said, I think I can do something with that. The preacher's wife. Well, I had to find a text. And so I started flipping through the roller decks of my mind. Uh -huh. And uh, I came up with Romans 7, verses 1 through 4. Uh -huh. In this text, we find that there was, number one, a marriage. Right. Am I all right? Yes, number one, we find that there was a marriage. Uh, question, if this text can be properly and soundly used, as a basis for this subject, then we have to find some things out. 
Number one, we need to find out who the preacher is. Right. Now, we need to find out who the preacher is. Right. And we need to find out who his wife is. Right. Now, don't get disturbed and think I'm going to talk about my wife. <laughs> or Booker's wife or your wives. I, while my wife is a good preacher's wife and Brother Booker's wife is a good preacher's wife. These are not the wives I'm talking about tonight. I want to talk about the preacher's wife. According to the text, there was a marriage. The Bible says, wherefore, my brethren, ye have become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another. Now, marriage has taken place. Is that right? Yes. Then the question is, if this text can properly and soundly be used as a basis for this subject, then who is the preacher? And who is the wife? Or what is the wife? Right. Well, now, I'm not going to keep you in suspense. Those that are not accustomed to reading the Bible, right. Jesus is the preacher. Yes. According to the text, he's the husband. And we need to find out and we need to understand that not only is Jesus the preacher, yeah. but he's the husband. Yes. Is that all right? Yes. Well, now, let me work it out here. Jesus is the preacher. And according to the text, he's a husband. Because he said, married to another, yes. even to him who was raised from the dead. All right, now, we know according to Romans 7 and 4, that Jesus is the husband. Yes. And we know that Jesus is and or he was a preacher. Matthew chapter 5 through 7. Uh -huh. We find that that body of scripture yeah. is entitled the Sermon on the Mountain. Yes. But tell me yes, who was the preacher? Right. Was it Moses? No, was it Elijah? No, sir. no, no. Was it Jeremiah? No, sir. The preacher was Jesus. Right. In Mark chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, uh -huh. we find Jesus preaching in Capernaum. In Mark chapter 1, verses 38 and 39, right. we find Jesus preaching in Galilee. Right. In Matthew 11, verses 2 through 5, we find Jesus preaching. So we find that Jesus is the preacher. But now, we know that Jesus is the preacher. But will you tell me uh, who, uh, what is the wife? All right. According to the text, Romans 7 and verse 4, we find that the church is the wife. Right. Is that all right? all right? Because we find that the uh, Paul was writing to Christians, yeah. members of the church, yeah. when he wrote these words, right. in order to substantiate that. Let's go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Uh -huh. The Bible says, when you get there, say amen. 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 You ought to say hallelujah because I know you're on your way. Right. <laughs> Romans chapter 1 and verse 1. The Bible says, Paul a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Well, now, verse 3, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh, declared to be the son of God with power. I don't care what the Muslims say. Jesus is the son of God. Yes. He was declared to be the Son of God, and not only was he declared to be the Son of God, but he was declared to be the Son of God with power. Yes, sir. Am I right? Amen. According to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations, for his name, among whom so ye also, the called of Jesus Christ, Romans 1 and verse 7, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Yes. Is that all right? Yes. Now we find that the saints in Corinth were in Christ. 
Is that all right? The saints in Corinth were in Christ. And so we know that Paul understands uh, who a saint is and what is required to be a real saint. To be a real saint, you have to be where? You have to be in Christ Jesus. Is that all right? Somebody says, well, Gibbs, that's a deduction. Well, I'm going further than a deduction. Let's go over to Romans chapter 6. Paul said in Romans chapter 6 and verse number 1, what shall we say then? Right into the same folk. Yeah. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Uh -huh. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us Amen. as were baptized into Jesus Christ. So he's talking to people that have been baptized into Jesus Christ. So I have no problem over in Romans 7 and 4 because he's talking to the same folk who were called saints. The same folk who were in Christ because they had been baptized into Christ. Is that right? And he says to those same people, wherefore my brethren. That's another indication. He said my brethren. Yes, my brethren. Now, everywhere you see brother, it doesn't mean brother in Christ. Right. There are some places it means uh, brother in the flesh. Right. Is that all right? all right? I'll give an example of that. You remember when Ananias went to Saul yeah. before he uh, became a child of God. Right. He, he talked about him uh, being his brother, yeah. right. but he was talking about being a brother in the flesh. Yeah. Is that all right? But here in Romans 7 and 4, it's talking about that spiritual relationship we have in Christ Jesus. Right. Is that all right? Yes, How am I doing so far? Right. I'm talking about the preacher's wife. Yes, all right. Now, well, we know that according to the text, Romans 7 and 4, the church of Christ is the wife. Right. Who's the preacher? Jesus. It's the preacher. All right. All right. Not only is Jesus the preacher, but Jesus is the husband. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. All right. Question number two. Who is the wife? The wife is the church. We're talking about the preacher's wife. So when I talk about the preacher's wife, I'm talking about the preacher's church. Is that all right? I think we're on level ground right now. Somebody said, Gibbs, every time I turn around, you're talking about the church. Every time I turn around, you're talking about uh, baptism. You know, there are some things you just must talk about. Every time you get up, or at least most times you get up, you need to mention these things. You don't mention one, you sure don't need to mention the other. There are several things we need to cover. But on the first principles, if you don't cover the church, it's something wrong with your preaching. All right. On the first principles, if you don't cover baptism, it's something wrong with your preaching. All right. Oh. Right. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, every time I turn around, you're talking about baptism. Uh -huh. Well, now, every time I get on the plane, they say the same things about uh, tray tables and seat backs. <laughs> Be sure your tray tables are in the uh, seats are in the upright position. Yes, sir. Every time I get on a plane, they say the same thing. Yeah. I have it memorized. I get tired of it. But the reason they mention it over and over and over again is because of its importance. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. They talk about having your seats upright and your tray tables fastened. Why? Because you don't need to have all that stuff loose while you're taking off during turbulence and when you're landing. Is that all right? Yeah. But they mention it over and over. I've never gotten on a plane where they did not say that you have a need. If you have, I'd advise you to quit flying that airline. I don't hear myself. I advise you to quit flying that airline. If you don't hear it, I hear it over and over. And I expect that when I get on that. I said, well, here they come with that same old story. And members of the church ought to expect that. 
You know, you should never get tired of hearing about baptism because if you hadn't been baptized, you wouldn't be in Christ tonight. That's just like saying you get tired of hearing you're about your wife. If you still love her, you like to hear her name. Come on, brethren. That's like saying you get tired of hearing your mother's name. If you love her, you can't hear your mother's name too much. And if you love the Lord, you can't get tired of hearing about his church. So when the text says they were married to another, we know who the marriage centered around. Christ, the preacher, and the church, which is the preacher's wife. Am I doing all right? If I'm not doing all right, I'll put this one down and preach up there. I know you were listening to me closely to make sure I was going to put this thing together right. And have I put it together all right? Now that it's together, we can fly. All right. I want you to notice the preacher has only one wife. The title reads, The Preacher's Wife, Not Wives. Come on now, tell me the truth now. The Preacher's Wife, Not Wives. You see, I worked that thing out on that plane. Began to scribble notes and I said, The Preacher's Wife. And I understood, I understood, I uh, underlined The Preacher's Wife. And uh, like you said, I said, that means one wife. A preacher has only one wife. Once I satisfied my mind that Jesus was the preacher and that the church was the wife, I said, I've got to show people that in this text, he had only one wife. According to the subject, only one wife. Only one wife. Can I hear that? One wife. One wife. Don't get, I'm not going to talk about marriage. I'm not going to talk about your marriage. So you can let them turn loose here. <laughs> there are many who unconsciously portray Jesus, the preacher, as a polygamist. Is that all right? One who has many wives, and somebody might ask, Gibbs, how do they suggest this? That my Lord is a polygamist. They suggest that when they say all churches belong to Christ. Now, if you're saying all churches belong to Christ, you're accusing Jesus of being a polygamist. Trying to say the church of God in Christ belongs to him. Trying to give him the Baptist church. The church of Christ, yes. The Methodist church. Trying to give him the Presbyterian church. Trying to give him the Jehovah's Witnesses. But they don't want him, and he doesn't want them. <laughs> I might as well tell it like it is. I know some folk, you know, get hot. But, you know, you can stomp up dust from here to Texas. But once it's settled, it's the Bible is still right. <laughs> so when you say all churches belong to Christ, it's just like claiming that Christ is a polygamist. He has but one wife. What is the wife? The church. How many wives does he have? One. Now, I know you can understand that. Now, if you remember the Baptist church, the Methodist church, he's not married to those churches. Come on now. Even if you're not a member of the church of Christ, you ought to say amen. amen. Because you can find what I'm saying in the Bible. Yes. Now I want you to notice I don't have any Baptist manual up here, Methodist manual. And when I had them, I was showing that they were contrary to the word of God. Amen. All we need is the Bible yes. and common sense. Yes. And if you don't have common sense, the Bible not going to help you. Yes. Is that all right? Yes. Your mother and father can send you to school. But they don't have a common sense class. That's something either you have or you don't. And I hate to be around folk who act like they don't have it. <laughs> you see, you can't interpret the scriptures properly without common sense. Let me give you an example. God told Noah, make thee an ark. But do, are you building an ark? Why? Because you know he wasn't talking to you. God told Abraham, take your son Isaac and offer 
offer him as a sacrifice. Are you getting ready to kill your son? Why not? You know that God was talking to Abraham. There's some time that God gives commands to some people and he doesn't give, that he does not give to others. But in the New Testament church, we are under the same command. Is that all right? You see, God deals in different ways. In the different dispensations, God has dealt different ways. But I'm glad everything is all right. I am the New Testament age. Is that all right? Well, now, some people interpret that to mean that nobody's above the other. I hear people say nobody's better than anybody else. Well, that, that's not true. If a person lives a better life, they, aren't they better? Oh, come on now. And some people have it bad saying the preacher ain't no more than anybody else. You come on, say amen, hallelujah. But I know that's not right. Because when I go to the hospital, they have a place for me to park. It says clergy park. They don't have one for you. They have parking for the doctors and for the preachers. How in the world are we going to say, act like they have more sense than we? <laughs> you better get you a clergy sticker. <laughs> Is that all right? Want to get mad because they want to put preachers parking out there. But when you go to the doctor, he has his parking spot. And all he's doing is working on you physically. But your preacher is working on your soul. And you don't want him to have a special parking spot. You see, I tell it like it is on the inside and on the outside. Just ask them where I preach. Won't give tell you. They'll say yes. He'll tell you. Amen. I might not be as bold, but I'll tell him. <laughs> Everybody talks a little noise when they're away from home, you know. I get bad when I'm out of town. <laughs> I get bad. Yeah, when my wife's not around, I say, I'm the head of my house. And I bring in all the money. So my wife, my wife doesn't work. So I get bad. But when I get back home, I say, honey, what we gonna do? <laughs> now, <laughs> you can walk around here talking about you the head of your house and treat your wife like a dog if you want to. But when she packs up and leaves you, you're going to start singing that song, Honey, I didn't mean it. <laughs> see, see, these wives are not taking what they used to take. Or they used to let you slap them around, but they're not taking that anymore. You ask Al Green. Before, before this... Before his wife put those hot grits on him, he was out there singing love and happiness. Make you want to do wrong, do wrong. She put those hot grits on now. He said, oh, me. Thank you. The preacher has but one way. To the Bible we go. He has but one way. If the wife is a church, there's only one church. Is that all right? Isaiah, in prophecy, it shall come to pass. When in the 
last day, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain, shall be exalted above the hill. All nations shall flow under it. Many people will go and say, come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the house of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us of his ways. You know, that's why the religious world is in such a mess. We don't concentrate in his ways. He said, for we shall walk in his ways and his paths. For out of Zion, the Lord shall go forth the law. And the word of the law from Jerusalem. But don't forget that he said the house, not houses. Somebody said, give to jump from church to house. You have to understand that the church and the house refer to the same group of people. First Timothy chapter 3, verse number 14. Paul, in writing to Timothy, said these things right unto thee. Hoping to come under thee shortly. But if something holds me up. But if I tarry long, if I stay longer than I plan, that thou mayest know how thou ought to behave thyself in the house of God, which is a church. So the house and the church are one and the same. And if there's only one church, there's one house. 